So this guy has a pail of water and he's going to move the pail around so that it goes in circular motion. And to keep it in circular motion, he'll have to apply a force to it. And this force will be called a centripetal force since that's what's keeping this object in a circular path. And so if we were to represent this in a diagram, we draw the pail as a point-like object and its path would look something like this. And so it's going this way, which is counterclockwise. And since it's at the bottom here, then its velocity would be something like this. And so as you can see, its velocity is going to be tangent to the circular path that it's taking. So velocity is going to be tangent to the circle. And so the force that he's exerting on it is going to be upwards, which is towards the middle of this circle. And so this would be denoted as capital F sub C, which is the centripetal force. And if you remember, acceleration is always going to be in the same direction as the net force. So this would be the acceleration of the object. And so it kind of makes sense that its velocity is going to the right and its acceleration is going up because then that means that at the next moment in time, its velocity will be shifted up a little bit more. And so let's say at this new point, which is the next moment in time, its velocity is now going to be tangent to the circle and it's slightly higher angled higher upwards than it was before because the acceleration was pulling it upwards. And now the acceleration is going to be pointing to the middle again of the circle. And so you can see that the acceleration and the velocity vectors are going to be perpendicular to each other. And so now that the velocity is going this way and the acceleration is pulling it that way, then it's going to angle slightly higher up at the next moment in time. And so it'll be here now, and the velocity vector will be a little bit steeper. And again, the acceleration is going to change so that it's going to point towards the middle of the circle again. And it's just gonna go like that around and around until something stops it. We can also describe circular motion using the variable t, which is the period. And that's going to be equal to the time it takes over the number of cycles. And so if you have a problem that says the pail of water travels four cycles in eight seconds, then you can say that in eight seconds, it, it makes four cycles in total. And so that's going to be two seconds per cycle. So the period is basically how much time it takes to go through one whole cycle of this circle. So if you know the period of the object, you can also find the velocity, because velocity is defined as 2 pi r over the period. So where did we get this 2 pi r from? Well, if you remember from math, the circumference of a circle is equal to 2 pi r. And so if you take the circumference of this circle, then that will give you the total distance that the object travels. And we're dividing that by the time it takes to go through one cycle. So this is basically just equal to delta x over delta t, which looks more familiar. So the circumference is equal to the displacement of the object, and the period is basically just delta t, or the amount of time that's passed. One last thing that you'll need to know for circular in motion is that acceleration is equal to velocity squared over r, and r is going to be your radius. So these three expressions are going to be very important for doing calculations involving circular motion.